Right, so, because we've got this theory of the ether, people were very interested in doing experiments to measure this. Okay? So you want to be able to measure your speed through the ether. So in order to measure your speed through the ether, you have to be able to measure the difference in the speed of light in different directions. Okay? But as I said, this is a very, very difficult experiment to do. Right? If you think about measuring the speed in the usual way you measure speed, which is you know, to fix a distance and then see how long it takes to go from here to there, right? then that's going to be very, very difficult. Right? Suppose that I fix a distance of about a kilometer, okay? and I do an experiment where I send light from this position here to this position here. Right? And I measure the time it leaves and the time it arrives. So the first difficulty, there are lots of difficulties, right? The first difficulty is that this time is very short. It's just three millionths of a second. Okay? So that's the first difficulty, is actually just measuring the time accurately. Right? Measuring accurately the time at which it leaves, and measuring accurately the time at which it arrives. It's different. Right? It's so short. Secondly, the thing you're trying to measure is not the speed of light itself, but the change in the speed of light. Okay? So if the speed of light takes a few millionths of a second to go here, then the change in the speed of light will be even smaller. Right? The change in the time measurement will be you know, billionths of a second or even smaller, depending on your velocity through the ether. So that's a very short difference of time to measure. The third and final problem is that in order to do this experiment, you need to have two time measuring apparatus, right? You need to be able to measure time here, the time at which the light starts, and you need to be able to measure time here, the time at which the light arrives, right? And, again, these clocks need to be synchronized. They need to tick at exactly the same time, right? Because even if the difference between them is a few millionths of a second, it destroys your measurement. So all of these things are very difficult experimental problems. Okay. And that's why the original experiments trying to detect this did not look like this. Okay. You had to be a little bit more clever than just boom, boom, and measure the time. Right. So I'm going to describe the original experiment to you okay. after the break. Um, so in, in order to prepare, the first thing I want to do is worksheet one, question three which is looking at this kind of problem. Okay, so suppose the Earth is moving relative to the ether, so the speed of light is not the same in all directions, and a light beam travels between two mirrors and is reflected back along its original path. So there is a picture there to help you. Let me just draw it again here. So the experiment is this. You have two mirrors, the distance between the mirrors is L, okay? And what you do is you measure the time it takes for light to move between these two mirrors here and then back or in. So in that way, right? Now, already, you see we've solved one of the problems that I talked about. Because in order to do this experiment, you only need one clock, right? Because you're measuring the time it leaves and the time it arrives at the same point. So that's already an improvement. By using a mirror, we can get rid of one clock. That's a big help. Okay. And we want to know how long it takes. Okay. So if the ether is stationary, then it's dead easy, right? If the ether is stationary, then the time it takes is simply distance divided by speed. Right? The distance is 2L, because it goes there and comes back. Speed of light is C. But that's not what the question is asking you, because that's a bit boring. The question A and B are two different parts. In part A, you assume that the ether velocity is moving parallel to the light with the speed v. So that's part A of the question. Assume that the ether is moving this way. Okay. And part B of the question is assuming the ether is moving this way. So we're just going to calculate the time it takes for the light to go here and back in two different cases. 
First, when the ether is moving in that direction, parallel to the light. And second, when it's moving perpendicular to the light. Okay. And so note, in particular, T1 is bigger than T2, right? So if you're moving parallel with the ether, that's a bit slower than moving this way in total time, right? T1 was going this way, T2 is going this way. So T1 is bigger than T2. Yes. It is U squared, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's right on the, on the worksheet, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then finally, let's do part D. Part D says, time, find the velocity u, as we call it here, for the total time difference to be 1% of the total time. Okay. So we want that L u squared over C cubed is 1%, 1% 1 is 0 0.01 of the total time, which is approximately 2L over C. Okay. So we want to solve this equation for, sorry, 2, yeah, 2L over C. We want to solve this equation for u. So this means that u squared is equal to L's cancel. So we get 2 mega <laughs> 0 0.02 times c squared. So therefore u is equal to the square root of 0 0.02 times c. Um, which is about 0 0.14 times C, which is, okay, 4.2 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. Sorry, if you can't read that. I'll, it'll be up there for the break, so you can come and see it later. Okay, so what this shows is that even to measure a very small amount of time difference, like just a 1% time difference between this way and that way, you need to have a very, very large ether velocity. Right? This is more than 10% the speed of light. Okay. So that looks quite forbidding, right? This time difference, if you measure this time difference, then that, you can use it to calculate the ether velocity, right? Because if you can measure this time difference, you can calculate u. But because c is so big and you've got a c cubed on the bottom, this time difference is incredibly small. Right? But the amazing thing is that um, two scientists called Michelson and Morley managed to do an experiment that could measure this time difference. Okay? And it was a really incredibly clever experiment. So we'll take a break. It's a little bit late. But we'll take a break for 10 minutes. And after the break, I'll tell you how Michelson and Morley were able to measure this time difference.